Well, thank you so much, Betsy, and to uh, all of you, thank you for coming this evening. We should be in store for a wonderful um, talk and reflection. I'll introduce our speaker in a moment, but I just wanted to say a quick word about the rest of the year. We've got four events going on. This is the opening event uh, in a month. This sounds like a um, unabashed plug for myself, but it so happens the next one of these, I'm going to be doing the, the speaking on November 12th, and then we have two events in the spring. If you haven't received one of these before, uh, there are brochures over here on the table that we'd be happy for you to pick up. Uh, two of our colleagues, Mary Doctor and Laura Montgomery, who've been directly involved in putting together a semester-long program that Westmont now runs each fall in Mexico, and will be presenting reflections on that program and uh, their experiences in teaching there, and the larger topic of uh, U.S.-Mexican relations, and this will be in anticipation just a few days later of our President's Breakfast, where the speaker and guest will be the former President of Mexico, Vicente Fox. So that's a large event coming up uh, for Westmont and Santa Barbara. And then later in the spring, uh, one of our colleagues in philosophy, Mark Nelson, will be uh, giving a talk on the morality of organ trafficking. He works in uh, the area of moral philosophy. and so. Please uh, plan to tell your friends and uh, uh, join us for those other events. This evening, we're privileged to have Dr. Kim Kilstrom with us from our computer science department. Let me say a few words about Kim and her both academic background and career and uh, family, because that's part of tonight's uh, topic as well, this both professional and personal connection with the T-Fire last year. Uh, Kim joined the faculty at Westmont on a full-time basis in 1999. She had been a student, both as an undergraduate and then also as a uh, master's level uh, student in electrical engineering, and then um, went cross town here to UCSB for her PhD in computer engineering, and then joined, as I said, our faculty uh, 10 years ago now. It's hard to believe it's been that long. This would be her 11th year. <laughs> And Kim has been remarkably successful now, uh, officially an associate professor. She has won both the Faculty Research Award at Westmont and also the Teacher of the Year Award. She has co-led with her husband Ken, uh, one of our off-campus programs in Europe. Uh, actually, that's where they were when the T-Fire occurred. And she may share just a little bit about finding out about the T-Fire from 6,000 miles away. Um, she has uh, earned or been granted two prestigious National Science Foundation grants. She's in the middle of uh, one of those right now as principal investigator. Been very prolific in engaging students along with her in research so that almost all of her recent publications have involved student researchers as well. And that's something at Westmont that we really highly value the collaboration between faculty and students, and Kim's been a great example of that. Uh, she and her husband, Ken, have also been, who's, who's in our uh, physics department, have also been great examples of the wonderful ways in which Westmont faculty and students can uh, partner together in social ways. They live uh, not very far from campus on Circle Drive, if you know the neighborhood just adjacent to Westmont, and for years, actually about 25 years now, they have been in that neighborhood and uh, are famous for their hospitality to students, and um, particularly computer science and physics students <laughs> seems to get that <laughs> hospitality, but uh, they themselves have three children. Kathy is their oldest, and she, uh, went to Wheaton College and now is working on a PhD at Princeton Seminary. Uh, Karen is their middle daughter. She too went to Wheaton and is now in science education in the Chicago area. And then their son, Kevin, is a senior already? Senior at Westmont. And uh, some of you may have seen Kevin at Westmont basketball games doing some of the broadcasting and announcing at those games. So uh, that's a little bit of their family, which is worth mentioning again, because part of this talk this evening is 
is to reflect upon lessons from the tea fire and some of those lessons were very personal lessons since the Kilstroms lost their home uh, to the fire and in Ken's case he also lost his uh, academic office. Uh, two of our faculty were most unfortunate in that experience, Ken and one of our psychology professors. So it's been quite a year for them. And in this case, Kim has been willing to think not only personally but professionally about the implications of the fire, fire protection, and how that might inform her own work within computer science. So we're delighted that she is here this evening to share with us on the topic fire, applying lessons learned in the T fire to computer systems. Once Kim is uh, completed in her presentation, she's going to be more than willing, I know, to take some questions from, from you all. So join me in welcoming Kim this evening. I know, it was fast. Um, thank you so much, uh, Rick, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, this is not really my comfort zone to be speaking uh, to a large group. Um, I, I was uh, thinking about this, you know, today in a faculty forum, the, this talk was announced, and uh, it was announced by the vice chair, and when he got to the title, he said, fire and uh, 14 faculty members headed for the gym. Um, but, uh, and so I was hoping to use that tonight maybe to, uh, to uh, trim down the audience a little. So, <laughs> fire. <laughs> so, uh, well, I guess that didn't work. But uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, as you all know, a, wire, a wildfire swept through the hills of Santa Barbara on November 13th and it did burn something like 1940 acres and destroyed 230 homes and uh, we did suffer uh, some of those losses on the Westmont campus as well uh, a number of structures and as well as 15 faculty homes were burned and so I did want to try to reflect about this and try to figure out what uh, lessons could be learned for this ex from this experience um, first, so basically, I want to start with a little bit of the personal story. Rick very um, graciously uh, talked about the fact that, that uh, my personal story is involved. And then I wanted to give a little motivation and introduction to the actual um, comparing and contrasting and uh, applying these lessons to computer systems design, which is what I do, and then give a few uh, final thoughts. Uh, so basically, as uh, Rick mentioned, uh, we were in Europe. Uh, we were leading Westmont's Europe semester uh, for 43, home, uh, 43 students. And our son, Kevin, was one of those 43 students. This is a picture of us uh, along the trip. And uh, we had an amazing time. We studied in 13 different countries in Europe. And then we moved to Israel for the final three weeks. And it was just an amazing time. A great group of students. And uh, we learned so much during that experience. But we were in Israel on the morning of November 14th. For us, it was the morning of November 14th uh, when we heard, when we received a phone call. And it was actually from Dana uh, Vandermeer, who's in the audience right now, her sister back home. She was on the trip with us. She and her husband were co-leading it with us. And uh, she received a phone call from her sister and then called us, indicating that there was a brush fire threatening Santa Barbara and our neighborhood. And you re may remember some of this uh, footage from uh, KEYT. Um, the, um, what we heard uh, that the, the fire was threatening, and then we heard reports that the Westmont students were all safe in the gym, and this is them in the gym where they uh, were evacuated. Um, but that several buildings on campus had been burned. And then we received a phone call from one of the students, and she said, I have some bad news. I was watching the media coverage on TV, and I'm 95% sure I saw footage of your home burning. And this is actually our home burning. Uh, this is the footage. She uh, took a picture of it off the TV screen. And uh, that's uh, how we knew. Um, we certainly felt a 